Maccabi Haifa's basketball fortunes seem to rise and fall each week as this topsy-turvy Israeli Winter League season counts down towards the playoffs. To balance the stress of a playoff chase, downtime is transformed into opportunities for first-hand experiences. If you asked me in 26 years would I ever be here, I, I would have never thought that I would get this experience. Walking among the sites these players have been hearing and reading about their whole lives moves them. The British did not follow what was expected from them. They started to make regulations that the Jews cannot buy land. We didn't like it. We formed an underground of freedom fighters. And they took me to a prison, which is here in Jerusalem. It's called the Kishle. Getting a different take on a conflict that grows more prominent on the world stage inspires them. It, for me, it's very important that you see the other side, the inside of the Israeli life. We are living together. Of course, there are tensions a little bit, you know, but still, the life of the Jewish together with the Arabs is very, very calm and uh, very normal. The pro sports landscape in Israel's third largest city is enjoying a renaissance as Haifa's basketball faithful turn their eyes towards a furious playoff push. Maccabi Haifa's assistant coach, Ofer Rahimi, is a native of Nazareth, Israel, a town with a lot of biblical history and the center of the Christian pilgrimage. Ofer guided Rene Rojot and Hanan Coleman through his hometown for a close-up experience of a city and its people. Guys, welcome to Nazareth. Pleasure to have you here. As you know, I grew up here. And I want to tell you a little bit about the city. A lot of tourists, a lot of Christian people all over the world come to see the place. So a lot of this has been here for years now, decades? Yeah, for more than a thousand years. Oh. Jesus Christ grew up here. And I must say that here is the real peace. We grew up together, Arabs and Jewish. And for me, you know, to bring you over here, that you know the, the real Israel, not the one that you see on the news all the time that we are living in peace together. To come to a place like this where you can really see how, how you guys coexist as opposed to what you see on TV or hear about on TV. You would never think like people live side by side like they do here in the city. And that's impressive, man. It's very, very calm and uh, very normal. I must say, very normal. <laughs> Shalom. What's that supposed to be? This is like the sweet area. Oh, okay. Everything's like soap and honey. Yeah, that does look like it. What is, some of this looks like garlic. It's cashew nuts, yeah. man, and pistachio. Oh, okay. It looks rather interesting, that's for sure. I tell you what, it's sweeter than anything you ever tasted before. Oh, Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Oh, for real, it is cheese. What's this called? Mm, yeah. It's called delicious, that's what that's called. Yeah, that is good. It's made with a cheese down here from goat cheese, special one, like a sweet spaghetti on the top with pistachio and tons of sugar. Would you like to see how they make it inside? Sure, let's, let's see what's happening. Come on, let's go. Hey, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Uh, nice to meet you. It's a nice place you got here, man. Good hands dirty. Yeah, yeah. The Danish sensation, he's from Denmark, so he's used to being in the bakery. Okay. Oh, mine was for sure better. He went second, so he, he learned off of my technique, but he still couldn't like get close to where I was at. They told me they probably get a lot of money for the one I made. Yeah, well, that's a good kebab right there, maybe. I definitely can learn something from him when it comes to bakery, for sure. The, uh, the Danish sensation. Thank you. You can see a lot of tourists come, buy the souvenirs, enjoy the good food. I would like to buy you this kind of juice. Make us four. Uh, 
That's good. So you drink a glass of that a day? You live to you be a hundred. Really? Hundred. This is the church you're talking about right yeah, here? Yeah, this is the church. This is the church. Been here for about almost six months now, and seeing this church for the first time, uh, I'm kind of upset I, I've waited so long to come by. For Renan, it was special. He's, he's a believer. I see him pray and say the grace before he eats, and for, for him, I think it was special. I knew about it uh, a little bit from our coach, Ofer, and, and coming here to see it, it puts it into to real life. I think that the experience of a professional basketball player is to absorb the place that he's playing for. It's true that they are away from their families, but on the other hand, they have the opportunity to live in different places, know different cultures. I think it's nice. Rene and Hanan return to the court looking to get back on a playoff run. The team was interested in fortifying their roster, and they looked for a familiar face. Adrian Henning was that familiar face, and he was re-signed by Maccabi Haifa. The power forward helped lead the team to the Israeli League Finals just one season ago. It's good to be back, first of all. As some people know, me and Ike and Renee have played together in Mexico for many years, so uh, they're not just teammates of mine. They're like friends and family, brothers. and. Um, you know, we had a family atmosphere last year when I came here with Haifa, so uh, a lot of the guys are back. Laraz, Doogie, Moran, uh, Ben in practice, you know, and uh, it's just good to be back with those guys to see them again. Uh, a lot of laughs and smiles. That's the big, big thing, you know, with any good team is having good chemistry uh, off the court. So I was happy to be back with those guys. and. Um, on the court, you know, I'm just here to help. You know, I talked to Coach Rami, and I told him I'm here to, uh, you know, just help bring intensity and defense and just a good attitude as far as, you know, trying to win every game. I can bring that immediately with the team. And um, on the court, just trying to build a chemistry, like, offensively and, like, you know, just find my role and what I need to do in that regard to help the team. I think last year, for me, coming to Israel was more of a, I had to adjust again uh, to the style of play, because it's definitely different from uh, playing in Mexico, where I played for the most part the last five to six seasons. So it was a big mental adjustment and physical adjustment, you know, rude, or they call the game differently. And so I think this year, I will be a little better prepared, you know, for that, and the adjustment won't be as tough. The big adjustment for me this season will be just coming into such a tense situation. Right now, all of these games are important, so I can't come in and just make mistakes and do things to hurt the team. I, I need to come in and help. The addition of Henning, along with the key players already on the roster, will add toughness and intensity to the team as the season winds down. Iko Febu has been the most consistent offensive player on Haifa. He's the third leading scorer in the league and is red hot at the right time. He's put up 20 points in each of the last two games. He also leads the team in rebounding. Point guard Moran Roth has stepped up his game as of late. He leads the team in assists and posted a season high 12 assists in a game against Herzliya. Coming up, Maccabi Haifa heads into the final games of the season and sets a course to return to the playoffs. Maccabi Haifa headed into their final seven games, needing to make a jump in the standings. A much needed winning streak could move them from eighth to fourth seed in the playoff picture. But Haifa ran into a tough Herzliya team who had handed them a loss, thus knocking them down back to ninth place. The Greens needed to rebound quickly, and their next game was also on the road, this time against Alok. Haifa jumped out to a 16-4 lead early, and they never looked back. The dominating 97-66 victory moved them into a four-way tie for sixth in the league. Next, the contest against 10th-ranked Naharia at home. 
The Greens came up big with another win to climb back into the middle of a packed league standings. With four games remaining, they need to be among the league's top eight to make the playoffs for the third straight season. Since the beginning of professional sports in Israel, soccer and basketball have been the most popular among sports enthusiasts. Haifa, the third largest city in Israel, is just like any other pro sports town in America, featuring rival teams, large arenas, and die-hard fans. Haifa is a sport town. You know, I was born in this city, and I went to see football since I was eight years old. I walked six, seven miles to see a football game. Maccabi Haifa in soccer uh, is considered one of the best teams in, in Israel. Uh, for years they were number one. When I was young and I, I, I came to my relatives here, spent some time uh, in summers, I was interested to watch the basketball. The first championship was two years ago when we took the championship. There are a lot of um, fans. It's part of their life to come to the games of the club. Due to the pro team's recent successes, both basketball and soccer teams now feature upgraded state-of-the-art facilities. Samio First Stadium is a brand new building. It just opened one year ago. The facility is first class. The city mayors discovered we should not keep running in old, old stadium which had been built in the, in the 50s. Magnificent stadium, one of the nicest not only in Israel, I think. The atmosphere in a game, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. The stadium is, is, is full of people. Uh, every game between 20,000 to 30,000 people, which is unusual in Israeli terms. Maccabi Haifa deserved it, and also Paul Haifa, which uh, won the championship once. And also, as we uh, thought, that we don't have a house, a home for the national team. So now, it's another stadium for the uh, national team. Maccabi's home court, Roema Arena, received a complete top-to-bottom renovation two years ago. It is now considered one of the top facilities in the country. Especially in a city like this, people want to see that there is a continuation, that there is a tradition, and that's what we developed. Since we came back to, uh, to this stadium, we are on the top of the basketball uh, in Israel. We played also in Europe. Uh, I think that we will definitely continue the process of becoming one of the best shows in town. People like uh, Jakob Shachar, the president, the owner of Ankabi Haifa, or like Jeff Rosen, the president and uh, the owner of Ankabi Haifa uh, basketball, found a good reason to go in Haifa to build good teams. And uh, we see it's a lot of success. Will Graves joined Maccabi Haifa in December. He quickly provided a new dynamic to the team, and Haifa's fortunes on the court began to change quickly. I've been playing basketball since I was four years old, so the basketball is really just second nature. So it's really just understanding personalities, and you know, I'm a sociology major, so that's pretty easy for me. I'm an outgoing person, and really it all just takes time. You know, it's not. You don't have to go in thinking one way, like allow myself to absorb the situation rather than go in with the expectations. The former North Carolina swingman has played all over the world since he left Chapel Hill, but never in Israel. During his downtime, Will makes a conscious effort to experience and learn as much as he can about Israel. And at the top of his list was Jerusalem. Shalom, this is my first time in Jerusalem. And this is my guy, Yael, and she's going to show me a great time here, and I'm going to learn a lot of historic things. I'm amazed. I've been living for 26 years, and if you asked me in 26 years would I ever be here, I would. I would have never thought that I would get this experience. So I'm very, very happy right now. I know my family would be too. 
so you, you know I like to surprise you. Yes. And I want you to look to your right. All right. To see the wailing wall. Oh. That is beautiful. It's a barbershop. So that's New Jerusalem and that's Old Jerusalem. And I can definitely tell the difference. That's the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, ah. the place of the crucifixion and the resurrection oh. of Jesus. We and have to go there. We have to go there. Yeah. Throughout history, Jerusalem has been one of the most contested pieces of real estate on earth. Today, Muslims, Christians, and Jews converge from points all over the world to experience their face holiest sights. Wow. That's crazy how it's just... Alright. It's the church where Jesus was crucified. I never thought I would be south of the border. I never thought I would be in a 9.0 earthquake in Japan. I never thought I would be standing close enough to uh, the tomb where Jesus was buried. There were a lot of people crying and a lot of people praying and, you know, being a Christian, you know, I can't really put into words my experience that I had in there. But to put to life, you know, a lot of stories that you've heard and pictures that you've seen, I mean, it was wonderful to be inside and I'm very appreciative of this opportunity. Basketball has allowed me to travel to places I've never thought I would be ever in my life. No matter where you are in the world, when you're on tour, you're definitely going to get hungry. After a quick bite, Will headed over to the Tower of David Museum. During the British Mandate following World War II, the Tower of David was refurbished and turned into a cultural center. As part of the initiative to protect the city's cultural heritage, a portion of the site also housed a jail. Now, 70 years later, a story from that jail would become significant for Will. Wow. This amazing building was actually the prison during the Mandate period before the State of Israel. And this building contains a lot of finds from ancient Jerusalem. I never imagined the day that I would say a prison was amazing. I'm the archaeologist who excavated this place. Oh, okay. And welcome to the antiquities of Jerusalem, the Thank prisons you. of Jerusalem. The prison was trying to create the escape. Oh, so the prison is actually up above us, and I want you to see uh, the engraving on the wall. That's the symbol of the Etzel, underground organization that used to operate during the pre-state period, and they used to, to fight the British in order to establish the state of Israel. So I know that somebody from the Etzel Irgun used to be sitting here in prison. The engraving, and it says Shmuel Matzah. Oh, is he still alive? Yes, he's still alive. Want to meet him? Yes, I would love to. Okay, so this is the house, Shmuel Mata house. Ah, uh, the guy that was um, in prison. In prison, the, exactly. Ah, so let's so, go and meet him. Shalom. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, Shalom. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a little story about what happened in Palestine. Okay. Before the state of Israel. Okay. The British did not follow what was expected from them. They started to make regulations that the Jews cannot buy land. We didn't like it. We formed an underground of freedom fighters to fight against them, to make their lives here miserable. They told me, 
Shmuel, we have a room in Jerusalem. We dug in the floor and we put eight revolvers in the can, said, go with your girls, my group, to this room at 10 o'clock in the evening and teach them what you have to do. As I went out, I see a command card coming. What are you doing here? I said, no, oh, nothing. I came here to look for somebody who said he's going to give me a job in, to work in the bank. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But they didn't buy it, they didn't buy the story. <laughs> said, get into the car. And they took me to a prison. I had a fork and I dug on the wall. I made this emblem. You see this emblem? We knew that we were doing it in, for our future, for the future of our children and grandchildren for thousands of years to come. Because we are here back to stay. 15th of uh, May, 1948, they said bye-bye. And we told them goodbye and no, do not return. That's that's my birthday. Yeah. But in 1988. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't even describe it right now. I'm still like processing everything he was saying. And you know, I, I just appreciate this whole experience. If I could sum up the last five hours of my life, I would say mind-blowing and in a great way. It's gonna take me to come back here two or three more times and to do it all over again to really appreciate how I feel today.